I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Have you ever noticed that there's nothing really unique about most flight controllers? There are some differences between some flight controllers and others, but for the most part, they all kind of pull from the same bag of features. But today, we're going to be looking at several flight controllers that are truly unique. Each flight controller in today's roundup has something that nobody else has. Stay tuned. So let's be clear, because I've learned that if you go into a video, you, the viewer, go into the video with an expectation of what I'm going to do in the video, and then I don't do it, you don't like that. <laughs> let's be clear, this is not a review. We're not going deep in depth. Bye. Okay, I just lost half my viewers. But everybody, oh, cloning, cloning, innovation. Where's the innovation? Here it is. Let's go. First one we're going to look at in this roundup is the Heliospring. And what makes the Heliospring unique is it's the first flight controller to implement the IMUF technology. IMUF is a technology invented by Helio, and what it basically means is that you take the filtering component of the flight control software and you move it over to a coprocessor. So a Helio flight controller has an F4 processor, which runs the Betaflight PID loop or Butterfly PID loop. And it has a separate F3 processor, which runs the, the filtering code. And that's more important than it might seem because filtering is a big, big part of what makes quadcopters fly well. There was a time when the PID loop was not as effective as it could be. And we had big improvements to be made by changing how the PID loop worked. But today the PID loop is very good and we've kind of hit a limit. There's so much vibration and noise coming from the gyro that the PID loop is just like, ah, what am I supposed to do with this? And by improving the filtering and letting the PID loop see more good data and less worthless, useless, distracting bad data, filters are where we get a lot of our performance improvements. So don't underestimate the importance of, the, of good filtering. By moving the filtering into the coprocessor, the Helio lets the PID loop run at the full 32 kilohertz gyro sampling rate that the, that the gyro chip is capable of outputting. There's a lot of debate about whether 32K sampling is beneficial, desirable, necessary. That's not a debate we're going to get into here. But if you want a flight controller that can run 32 kilohertz uh, sampling and 32 kilohertz uh, PID loop, the Helio is one of the only ones that can do it. Betaflight, even when running on an F7, can't run 32K, 32K under most conditions, if any conditions, frankly. The other thing that Helio has that's unique is the gyro filtering code that is moved over to the, to the coprocessor, which they refer to as IMUF. That code is not, the, they didn't just take the Betaflight code and extract it and move it to a coprocessor. They wrote their own customized code. So if you heard a big fluff some months ago about Kalman filtering, that's the kind of stuff that's in the IMUF. It's a completely separate filtering algorithms and paradigm, which of course the Helio guys say is much, much better than the stuff the Betaflight guys are doing. And that again is not an argument we're going to get into, but the Helio Spring Flight Controller has the IMUF technology and can run at full 32 kilohertz, which is something that no other Betaflight flight controller can do, except for this one. This is the Strix binary F10 flight controller powered by Helio RC. And the Helio guys, when they invented the IMUF technology, they put it in the Helio flight controller, but they never intended for it to be exclusive to the Helio flight. They wanted to license it to other flight controller manufacturers, and that's what's happened here. But the Strix binary F10 is not just a copy of the Helio board. The Helio board contains an F4 main processor and an F3 coprocessor running the IMUF code. The Strix binary F10 contains an F7 main processor and an F3 coprocessor running the IMUF code. And that's where they get F10 from. And some people are really, really annoyed at their use of the F10 nomenclature because there is no actual F10 chip. There's an, there's an F1, remember those? F3, F4, F7, there's no F10. And all they did is they said F7 plus F3 and they put F10 in the model name and some people don't have a big sense of humor about that. Now, when I first heard about this flight controller, my thought was, 
The Helio with an F4 processor can already run at the full 32 kilohertz rate that the gyro is capable of. So what's the point of upgrading? You go from 30% processor utilization down to 4% processor, big deal. <laughs> what have you gained? One of the things you gain with the Strix binary F10 is, you know, if you run FreeSky, you know what a hassle inversion is on your UARTs, having to wire up uh, smart port telemetry and SBUS with or without inversion. You can't use any UART you want, and there's a bit, it's just a big mess. The F7 flight controller doesn't have that problem. The other thing that the Strix guys say the F10 brings to the table is future-proofing. There's going to come a time when Betaflight wants to do more than even the F4-based Helio can do. And if you're interested in running at the full 32K rate, you're going to need a faster processor. I'm not sure how convincing an argument future-proofing is in a field where a given flight controller might be smashed into a concrete wall in a few months after you buy it, but yeah, future-proofing. Okay. The next one we're going to look at is the Brain FPV. And by the way, before I forget, there's links to all of the products we're looking at down in the video description. And I'll take a one moment to remind you, this is my full-time job. Those are affiliate links, and that's one way that you can help support me making these videos. Okay, that's all I'll say about that. Links in the video description. Thank you. Brain FPV has a long history of making innovative designs. Uh, the older Brain FPV RE1 I'm pretty sure that's the one that run the drone in firmware. This is an older flight control firmware. And these days, I dare say Betaflight is on the cutting edge of flight control firmware. But way back in the day when CleanFlight was struggling along, remember the LuxFloat PID controller and the MultiWii PID controller? Dronin was doing things that way before uh, CleanFlight and Betaflight did that made their quads fly really, really well. Another thing that Brain FPV Radix brings to the table is... It has a full graphical OSD. The OSD in flight controllers like Betaflight are what's called character-based, which means that the chip can display a character on screen and you can simulate graphics. That character is just, it's like sprites in old video games. The character is just a, a graphical thing. So you can make like the Betaflight logo. That's just made up of individual blocks of characters. But instead of a letter, it's just like part of the Betaflight wasp's face. A full graphical OSD can do things like the Brain of Radix can show your stick overlay in your screen, on your DVR, or while you're flying. It can do things like show the, you know how black box can show you the, the frequencies that are happening while you're flying? The Brain of PV OSD can show the full frequency display, the, like a spectrum display, while you're flying. So it's got a full graphical OSD, and that makes it unique. The other thing that makes it unique is it uses a Bosch gyro that nobody else in the mini quad industry is using. Everybody from the mini quad industry uses gyros from a company called Invensense. They're the ICM series gyros and they're originally designed for smartphones. They're not really designed for the kind of high vibration, high noise environment that mini quads are subjected to, but they're cheap as beans and they have low power consumption and so everybody uses them. But the Bosch gyro used in the Brain FPV Radix, Brain FPV says that it produces better results. We spend all this time playing with filtering. Look at what the Helio Spring guys are doing with the IMUF, filtering, filtering, filtering. And the Brain FPV guys say, wait, guys, if you just used a better gyro in the first place, you wouldn't, the gyro should be doing the filtering. All that stuff can be built into the gyro. That's its job. It's like you hire a, you hire somebody to paint your house and then you knock the paintbrush out of his hand and you do it for him. That's the Brain FPV guys would say. That's what we're doing with our filtering in Betaflight. Instead, just let the pro do it. Get a good gyro in the first place and you won't have these problems. And what's interesting is that the gyro in the Brain FPV Radix, actually, it doesn't run at 32K. It doesn't even run at 8K. I don't remember the number. I think it's like three kilohertz or something. It's got a lower sampling rate than any of the gyros in the Betaflight flight controllers that you're probably more familiar with. But many people say that it provides much clean, much smoother motors, cooler motors, cleaner output, and none of this BS with, what should my low pants cut off filter notch dynamic be? Just fucking get a good gyro and you'll be all right. That's the brain of PV Radix. The Flight One Revolt. Now, this one is unique because, similar to the Helio Spring, it's unique because of the software that it runs. It runs Flight 1. 
And Flight 1 is a completely separate uh, flight software from Betaflight with its own configurator. In fact, one of the best things about Flight 1 is not how it flies, although it flies very well for a lot of people. One of the best things about Flight 1 is how easy it is to set up a Flight 1 quad. The Flight 1 configurator has a bunch of setup wizards that just take you through the setup, auto detect very auto detect your UARTs, auto detect your receiver, and just many beginners have good experiences getting Flight 1 quads into the air. In fact, I have a video I made where I go through the setup of a Flight 1 quad for the first time. It takes about eight minutes total in real time. The video is even shorter. I'll put a link to that video down in the video description if you want to see what that's like. So the Flight 1 Revolt is unique because it runs Flight 1. It's not the, actually, Flight 1 has branched out. There's now there's now several Flight 1 capable flight controllers. Uh, there's a 20 millimeter board made by Flight 1. And there's the Schizo boards, which are basically just Revolts with Schizo's cool logo on it in a different color. But it's actually even, even worse than that for me as the author of this video. They started licensing Flight 1. And Flight 1 can actually run, I'm pretty sure it runs on the Pyrodrone flight controller as well, which is traditionally a beta flight flight controller. So maybe it's not as unique as it was, but there you go. As long as we're talking about flight controllers that are unique because of the software we run, we have to talk about the KISS flight controller. KISS uh, came about as a response to the over complexity of beta flight, clean flight, etc., and the difficulty of configuring it. And the design goal for KISS was to make a flight controller that is as simple to configure as possible. But KISS has definitely not let technological innovation pass them by. In fact, KISS has been the, on the forefront of technological innovation, which might surprise some of you because KISS is just not as popular as many other flight controllers today. But if you look at things like D-Shot, it was developed with KISS. KISS was one of the original developers of D-Shot and, and now it just everybody uses it, but it came from them. Other technologies in the ESC realm, such as sinusoidal drive and other things like that, are supported on KISS. KISS currently supports D-Shot 2400, which is Betaflight only supports up to D-Shot 1200. BL Heli ESCs only support up to D-Shot 1200. So KISS is still pushing the technological boundaries. But what makes the KISS flight controller really unique is that it runs the KISS software. And so it gets included in this roundup. The next flight controller in this roundup is the SP Racing F7 Dual. And before we get to what makes it unique, let's just acknowledge that one thing that makes it so special is that it's developed by Dominic Clifton, Mr. Clean Flight. Dominic Clifton is the guy who took base flight and forked it and made clean flight, which some of you guys who are new enough to the hobby maybe aren't even familiar with clean flight because for a few years now, beta flight has kind of been the most popular one and the one you're most likely to run into. But before beta flight, clean flight was the one that you were most likely to run into. And beta flight is, of course, a fork of clean flight. Without clean flight, beta flight wouldn't be there. Dominic also developed the SP Racing F3, one of the first F3 flight controllers to come into widespread use. This was back when everybody was using a Naze 32 with an F1. An F3 was a really big deal. The SP Racing F3 is probably the most popular flight controller on the market today, although Dominic Clifton hasn't seen a penny from it because all of those SP Racing F3s that you're buying from Banggood and that is in the mm, Eachine Wizard X220, those are really, really terrible clones of the SP Racing F3. The design of the SP Racing F3 was so good that it was copied widely. And I imagine he gets a lot of emails from a lot of people complaining about his flight controller, the SP Racing F3 clone that he had nothing to do with. Okay. The SP Racing F7 is unique because it has dual gyros. Look right here. Here's one gyro and here's the other. Now, I know what you're saying. That's not unique. There's a million flight controllers out there with dual gyros. The Betaflight F7 has dual gyros. There's omnibus flight controllers with dual gyros from Airbot. But wait, all of those flight controllers only use one of the two gyros at a time. You can choose to use the ICM gyro for 32K sampling. You can choose to use the MPU 6000 gyro for 8K sampling. You can pick one or the other. The SP Racing F7 has two gyros that you use at the same time. This is something called sensor fusion. And what it means is you basically get cleaner data 
By using two gyros, they're actually oriented 90 degrees to each other. And basically, yaw axis noise on one is in 90 degrees to the other. And you add them together and subtract them out and do some calculus. I don't know. And the end result is much cleaner data. Easier, cooler motors, easier tuning, etc. This is the only flight controller that I know that does this. Even though this is a standard technique in, in industrial, yada, yada, yada. He's the first one to put this on a flight controller that I know of. And the only as of today. The other thing that makes the SP Racing F7 unique is something called PID audio. And as cool as this sounds, I confess, I've never actually tried it. But the SP Racing F7 has a built-in microphone that lets you hear the audio from the quad, hear the motors and stuff, just like any other VTX or with a microphone on it. But the PID audio function adds synthesized sound to the audio that you hear in your earpiece that gives you information about what the PID controller is doing. So it helps you tune with sort of synthesized audible feedback. Instead of just having to listen for the motors oscillating to tell you that your P gain is too high or your D gain is too high, this PID audio gives you information. That's unique. I wish I could tell you more about it. I haven't ever actually tried it. Now, for those of you who are still with me to the end, I got two more for you that have a new feature that is currently unique, but I am pretty sure you're going to see a lot of flight controllers with this coming out soon. These guys just happen to be the first ones who've done it, as far as I know. And we're looking right now at the Luminaire Lux F7. It's not even available as of the time of making this video. Click the product link down in the video description if you're watching this some weeks or months from now and see if it's for sale. But... What makes this one unique, well, it's an F7 flight controller with, you know, dual, dual gyros. Lots of people have that. What the Luminaire Lux F7 has that nobody else has is dual camera switching. Holy crap. Look right here. Hang on. Where's the pads? Oh, S8. Wow. Oh, eight motor outputs. Wow. That's kind of cool because even if you're not running an octocopter, having extra motor outputs to reassign to some other function can be very, very useful. Hang on. Here we go. C1 and C2. It supports two cameras. So if you want to have a front facing and a back facing camera, like some people are doing to allow you to look like you're flying backwards when really you're flying forward. If you're on a plane and you want to have a front facing and a down facing camera, or some people have said, you know what I want to do? I want to have one camera at zero degrees up tilt for landing and one camera at like 60 degrees up tilt for Maddie flips. You can do that. Just flip an aux switch, flip an aux switch on your transmitter and you go from let's say 30 degrees to 60 degrees. Maddie. Not Maddie. Maddie, schizo. Maddie, schizo. Huh? Yeah. Camera switching. Pretty clever. Finally, we've got the CL Racing F7. And what makes this one unique is you may have seen a video I did a while back covering the Real Pit device. And what the Real Pit device does is it lets you power your video transmitter or any other accessory, but your video transmitter specifically, on and off using an aux switch on your transmitter. And what this means is that you can safely plug in your quad without worrying about blasting people out of the air. Or if you crash out and your video transmitter is at 800 milliwatts, you can flip the switch and turn it off so it doesn't overheat and smoke itself. That's pretty cool. But when I saw that real, I said, this should just be built into the flight controller. It's just a transistor. It's not a big deal. It's, it's clever that the tiny sled guys thought of this. It's a great idea. There's no reason to need an accessory board for this. And to be honest with you guys, the very next thing I did was I called up the designer of my flight controller and said, can we just put this in my flight controller, please? And then literally a few days later, I found out that Cheng Ling, the maker of the Seal Racing F7, already had that idea. The Seal Racing F7 is the first flight controller that I know of to be on the market with built-in true pit mode where you can power the video transmitter on and off using an aux switch without any accessories or anything. But I want to point that out because number one, credit to Cheng Ling. He's an amazing board designer, very innovative. But number two, however many months from now, when you guys see my new flight controller come out and it has this feature and you say, he's copying Cheng Ling. Cheng Ling did it first. I just want you to know I wasn't copying Cheng Ling. I was copying the real pit. It's a transistor, guys. It's just like it's a freaking light switch. You can't cop. It's it, take it easy. Okay. <laughs> all, all right, guys. That's going to do it for this video. This is truly unique flight controllers. What did I miss? 
Is there another truly unique flight controller out there that I overlooked that isn't in this roundup? You know where to put it. Put it down in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If my videos entertain you, educate you, help you solve problems, save time, save money, I hope you'll support me. I do do this as my full-time job. And one of the ways you can do that is by using the affiliate links in the video description. You can buy any product after clicking one of those affiliate links, not just the product that it's linked to. Anytime you shop at one of those linked vendors, Banggood, Race Day Quads, Rotorite Store, GetFPV, Amazon, click one of my affiliate links first, just, just every day, just click one of those links just to make sure that that cookie stays fresh. And then whenever you make a purchase from one of those vendors, you'll be supporting me. I also have a Patreon if you want to just throw a couple bucks at me every month. You can join my Patreon. I'll put a link down in the video description to that as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, happy flying.